So now that we've discussed the process of reparameterizing a vector function with respect to arc length, let's get to the actual purpose of doing that thing by defining what we refer to as curvature. Now curvature is the rate of change of direction per unit uh, distance traveled. Now I'm just going to say per unit distance because we already know from a previous video that I don't actually know how to spell the word traveled despite the fact that that's pretty important. So let's say for example that I make a curve like this versus making a curve like this. One of these is defined as being curvier than the other one. The one that is uh, the one that tends to be perceived as curvier is the one where we have a larger change in direction per unit arc length or per unit distance traveled. Now the way that we can help quantify this is by considering tangent vectors. So over the course of a very short length this direction vector has turned around almost completely, whereas over a considerably longer length, the direction of this vector has not changed a whole lot. So these two vectors, if drawn with the same initial point, would look kind of like this, meaning that there is a very large angle between them. Whereas these two, if we were to draw them with the same initial point, would look more like this, with only a slight change in direction between the two of them. Now, because of this, we now have a way of quantifying what this thing is. Now, as far as direction is concerned, we can do that with a tangent vector, but since I only care about the direction and not the magnitude, we're going to go with a unit tangent vector. So, the mathematical definition of what curvature is, we use kappa of t to describe curvature, is we take the magnitude of the unit tangent vector, No, we don't. Let's, uh, let's try that again. Uh, we take the magnitude of the rate of change of the direction with respect to arc length. Now, in order for us to take this derivative, though, we need to have the original curve parameterized in terms of its arc length. Now, we've already seen exactly how much fun that is. Uh, it was not. It was not at all. And so what we're going to do is come up with an alternate definition. or an alternate formula, if you will. The alternate formula that we're going to come up with is the following. Kappa of t can also be expressed as the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to time divided by r prime of t. Now the way that this one works is very straightforward and it's through the use of the chain rule. So we know that we can express the unit tangent vector as a function of time, and we can express s as a function of time as well. So what we'll do is the following. The derivative of t with respect to s, according to the chain rule, as far as parameterization is concerned, is that we can set it up as the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to t over the derivative of arc length with respect to t. However, we also showed in a previous video that ds over dt, according to the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1, is the same as the magnitude of r prime of t. Then up top we still have t prime of t. Now in order to turn this into a scalar quantity, which is what curvature is, we would need to take the magnitude of this vector which would be taking the magnitude of all of this, and since we already distributed the magnitude to the denominator, we can simply do this. Now the way that I'd try to describe curvature in terms of a physical quantity is, imagine that you are driving a car. What we're going to have you do is contemplate the steering wheel. So a steering wheel on a car. If you do nothing to the steering wheel and you just hit the gas, ideally what should happen is you would drive in a straight line. Assuming, of course, that your um, alignment isn't off from years and years of hitting potholes during Michigan winters, but that's neither here nor there. 
So if something is straight, its curvature is defined as zero, much in the same sense that if you do not turn your um, steering wheel at all, uh, you will go in a straight line. Now, if you were to turn your steering wheel ever so slightly and drive, you would be creating a very large circle eventually. Now, this would be kappa is small. So when you turn your steering wheel just a little bit, you're going to get a very small curvature, which is a very large circle. Whereas if you were to turn your steering wheel a lot and then drive, you would be making a very small circle. And this is where kappa is large. So to describe this in terms of a physical sense, curvature is essentially how much you are displacing or turning your steering wheel. If you turn it just a little bit, you'll have a very small curvature, but if you turn it a lot, you'll have a very large curvature. Now, small curvature means large circle, and large curvature means small circle. And that actually takes us to a theorem. So this theorem is a curve of constant curvature is a circle. Moreover, the curvature is the reciprocal of the radius of the circle. Now, in order for us to prove this, we're going to make use of the previous formula. First thing we're going to have to do, of course, is define a circle. Now, this can be done in two dimensions, so I'm going to use a two-dimensional vector quantity. I'm going to use the polar definition of a circle, where x is equal to r times the cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times the sine of theta. Now my parameter is going to be t and my radius is going to be a. And what we're going to show is that the curvature is 1 over a. So first thing I'm going to do is take a derivative that will give me negative a sine t and a times the cosine of t. Now eventually I'm going to need the magnitude of this vector as well for the actual curvature formula and through the use of a Pythagorean identity, we're going to get that this is a squared sine squared t plus a squared cosine squared t. Factoring out an a squared and applying a Pythagorean identity, we are going to get that that quantity is a. On a related note, in order for us to get our unit tangent vector, we're going to need to take the derivative that we just got and divide by the magnitude of the same derivative. So we're going to take negative a sine t a cosine t and divide both of those by a. So negative a sine t, a cosine t, we're going to divide both of those by a. We're going to wind up with the vector function negative sine of t comma cosine of t. Now we're going to differentiate that again for the formula. Curvature formula says we're going to take the magnitude of t prime of t. So differentiating once more, that'll be negative cosine of t, comma, negative sine of t. According to the curvature formula, we need the magnitude of this vector. So squaring each of these components, we'll get cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which is once again a Pythagorean identity. And that'll be equal to 1. According to the formula on the previous page, kappa of t is supposed to be equal to the magnitude of t prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. We got this to be 1, <clears throat> we got this to be a, and that is exactly what we were trying to show. The radius of the circle was a, and the curvature was the reciprocal of the radius of the circle. So that completes my proof. It also brings in the concept of not exactly a tangent circle, but a circle that intersects at the same point uh, with the same curvature. It's referred to as an osculating circle. We're not going to study that too much this semester, though.